Hello everyone. So after struggling through LMGs and with the release of their shipment extended playlist in Modern Warfare, it seemed like it was a better time than ever to move on to shotguns. After just under 2 weeks I managed to platinum them and I wanted to make this video to give some tips for those of you who are going for platinum shotguns as well as giving some thoughts on the experience. As has been the case with all these weapon guide videos, there will be timestamps in the description below if you just want to skip to a certain part. Shotguns are a class of weapons that are quite unlike the majority of other weapons in the game. Because unlike every other firearm in the game, shotguns do not fire a single projectile such as a bullet. Instead, they fire multiple pellets that spread out more and more the further the distance your enemy is. For this reason, shotguns are only viable in close range, as the further your enemy is away from you, the more pellets spread out, the less pellets hit and therefore less damage is dealt. So unlike assault rifles for example that shoot a single projectile, you can't be accurate with shotguns at long range and beyond certain ranges you can't even hit your enemies. However, on the flip side of this, this also means that shotguns are very powerful in close range encounters because they are one shot kill weapons and due to the pellet spread, you don't even have to be extremely accurate with shotguns to get a one shot kill and you just have to hit the majority of your pellets. Because of this, if you can consistently shoot in the general torso area of your enemies, shotguns are without a doubt the best class to use in close ranges. Shotguns have two other different types of ammunition, slug rounds and dragon's breath rounds. Slug rounds are a single projectile allowing you to be more accurate at longer ranges, however it sacrifices that spread you get with the regular shotgun shells so you're going to have to be much more accurate at closer ranges to get that one shot kill. Dragon's breath rounds are named pretty appropriately as they basically make your shotgun shoot fire. This does a bit of overtime damage after you've shot them at the cost of a reduced damage range. If you've ever been in a shipment game, you've definitely run into someone using Dragon's Breath and although they are a lot more obnoxious and make you feel dirty while using them, they are undisputedly the best ammunition for shotguns and if you're using a shotgun that has them, such as the Model 680 and the r 9 you should definitely be using Dragon's Breath rounds on them. As for each particular shotgun, the Model 680 is a pump action shotgun with the slowest fire rate out of all the shotguns. Due to its slow fire rate, the Model 680 is not a very forgiving gun if you miss a shot, so you therefore have to use positioning and cover to your advantage in gunfights. It's got an ammo capacity of 8 rounds, which is standard for shotguns, and it's also tied with the 725 for having the best hip fire spread out of all the shotguns. The Model 680 is also one of the few shotguns that has the Dragon's Breath rounds attachments, which can make it very powerful. The r 9 is a shotgun that quickly fires 2 shots before having to rechamber another 2. If you played Warzone at all during Season 6, you're probably still scared from the crippling PTSD that this thing gave us all with how OP it was. You can put on Dragon's Breath rounds to make it even more obnoxious and the r 9 has an amazing ammo capacity for a one shot weapon with an ammo capacity of 14 rounds. The r 9 has the second worst hipfire spread out of all the shotguns you have to do for Damascus, although with the right attachments you can still make the hipfire very good. The 725 is a 2 shot break action shotgun and although it has by far the smallest ammo capacity with just 2 rounds, it also has the most powerful and consistent rounds. The 725 has the best range out of all the shotguns and if you stack this thing out with attachments that boost its damage range, it basically becomes, in the wise words of Sir Ali A, a KNIFER SHOTGUN CONFIRMED! The 725 also has the most consistent one shot kill out of all the shotguns and it's tied with the Model 680 for the best hipfire spread, so if you can position well, this can be a very powerful shotgun. The Origin 12 is a semi-automatic shotgun. It has a base ammo capacity of 8 rounds which is standard for shotguns and it's got the worst damage range and hipfire spread out of all the shotguns. However, due to its consistent fire rate and potential to expand all the way up to a ridiculous 25 round drum mag, the Origin is the best shotgun that you have to do for Damascus for taking on multiple enemies at very close ranges. Do keep in mind that the VLK Rogue and the Jack 12 are not necessary to gold in order to get platinum for shotguns as they are both DLC weapons. As for the best orders to do shotguns, I'd recommend starting with the Model 680 to familiarise yourself with the feel of shotguns as it's a very typical shotgun. Then move on to the Origin 12, then use the 725 and finally finish out with the r 9 The loadout you're going to want to run while going for Platinum shotguns is for your primary, use whatever shotgun you're on obviously. For your secondary, I'd recommend using a launcher of your choice to passively shoot down killstreaks. You're not going to really need to use a handgun because you should be focusing on getting kills with your shotgun and it's not necessary to use a knife because the movement speed with shotguns is alright. So even if you've already gotten platinum on them, there's no other secondary that's more worth running than a launcher. Then for perks, for perk 1, use quick fix to replenish your health every time you get a kill because with shotguns you're going to be playing very aggressive and you're going to get a lot of kills. And when you're close range with enemies, it's not the best idea to pop a stim mid gun fight to get your health back up. For perk 2, since you're going to be playing so aggressive with shotguns, there's no point in running ghost to be stealthy, so instead I'd run hardline and run specialist on top of that so you can more easily get the perks you want. And for perk 3, battle harden is absolutely the best perk you can run so you're not as impacted by stuns or flashes. As for specialist, this is up to you. 
If you're using Hardline to get actual kill streaks faster, that works great as well. But if you're running specialist, the perks I like to put on are double time, EOD, and sometimes I like to pull quick fix as the first perk I get and pull cold blooded as my perk one instead. For tacticals, if you're a really aggressive player, stuns can work very well with shotguns because you can just stun a group of enemies and run in quickly and kill them all. However, if you're a slightly less aggressive player, or you're on a shotgun such as the 725 where you shouldn't be running into big groups of enemies, a stim is a much safer tactical to use. And for lethal, this doesn't really matter. I mainly use termites, but if you're playing shipment, I'd recommend running a frag grenade and whenever you spawn, just randomly chuck it, and the majority of the time, someone will walk by and you'll get a kill out of it. As for the best attachments to use on shotguns, with nearly every other class in the game, I'd normally recommend two different builds for each gun. One for a fast ADS for playing aggressive, and another for long shots for being accurate at longer ranges. However, with shotguns, since you can't competitively use them at long ranges, and shotguns are made much more for close range, there's only really one build that I recommend using for them, and it's for playing very aggressive and close range. What you're going to want to maximise is hipfire accuracy, movement speed, and a tight pad spread. I'll throw up the best attachments build for each shotgun right now. Even though you're only going to be using the same attachments the majority of the time and you won't be switching between builds often, I'd still recommend saving these builds as custom mods to make switching for them in future faster and easier. The max level of shotguns is in the high 40s to low 50s, which is fairly low for a primary weapon. And with the amount of kills you get with shotguns, I found that I was leveling them up really fast without double weapon XP tokens. So if you don't have a ton of double weapon XP tokens and you have a few more weapon classes to do, I'd save your double weapon XP tokens for the classes with higher levels like ARs and LMGs. The majority of the time, you should be exclusively playing in core modes because, like the sniper rifles and marksman rifles, since the shotguns are able to one-shot kill in normal core modes, by going into hardcore you're only putting yourself at a disadvantage. Because you're still going to get one shot kills in hardcore, but other people with much more forgiving weapons like assault rifles and SMGs are going to be able to one shot you as well, so there's no real point in going into hardcore. The only time you should be going into hardcore is if you're focusing on getting long shot kills with the 725, because the one shot damage range is much better in hardcore and I'll go into more details on that later. But for everything else, core is best while doing shotguns. And as I'm scripting this video, Shipment 24-7 is out, which is what you should exclusively be playing as it's the smallest map and therefore the best for close range guns like shotguns. Moving on to the different camo challenges for shotguns, the first camo challenge you'll unlock is spray paint and this is getting 400 kills. As is the case with all guns, you're not going to have to focus on this camo challenge at all and you'll do it passively while focusing on other camo challenges. Woodland is getting 75 crouching kills and for this, just get it out of the way as soon as possible. Try not to slide because the counting for slide kills as crouch kills is pretty inconsistent. Instead, run up to your enemies and just do a static crouch before you shoot them. Or if you're about to turn a corner where you know someone is, take a second to crouch before you do. It feels very awkward, but if you just focus on crouching kills, you can get it done in about 2 or 3 matches and not have to worry about it again. For digital, this is getting 75 hipfire kills, and you're not going to have to focus on this one because the majority of times you kill someone with a shotgun, it will be by hipfiring. For dragon, this is getting 50 point blank kills, and I mainly did this camo challenge passively, but if you're struggling on it, play a bit campy and wait at corners for people to turn, and try getting as close as you can before you kill them. Splinter is getting 50 headshot kills and you're also going to do this passively because if you shoot an enemy in the upper torso and just one pellet hits them in the head, which is pretty likely, it will count as a headshot so you shouldn't really have to worry about this one. However, if you're on the 725, for some weird reason the splinter camo challenge is different and you have to get 50 long shot kills instead of 50 headshot kills. In this instance, go into hardcore and put on the 32 inch competition barrel, choke, no stock, an optic of your choice as well as sleight of hand, and just treat this as a sniper. Don't underestimate how far you can get one shots with this thing. I remember I got a one shot at 35 meters. For Topo, this is getting 225 kills with all attachments, and this is yet another camo challenge you'll do passively because the majority of the time you're going to have all five attachments on your shotgun. For Tiger, this is getting 25 double kills, and since you're going to be playing so aggressive with shotguns and taking on multiple enemies, you're going to get this camo challenge without even trying, so don't focus on it. Stripes is getting 30 kills shortly after reloading and you're definitely going to have to focus on this one unless you're on the 725 because you reload so much with that gun already. Put on the sleight of hand perk and every time you get a bit of space where there's no enemies, quickly reload and then push some more enemies and try to get kills. And then after that, reload and just keep repeating this. It shouldn't take too long. For Reptile, this is getting 110 kills with no attachments and this one's going to be a bit annoying as the shotguns aren't as fun without their attachments. A small tip I'd have for this is to try to get closer to your enemies than you normally would because you're not going to have the attachments that tighten your pellet spread. And finally, for skulls you must kill 3 people in a single life 30 times and you're going to have to focus on this a bit, but with how powerful shotguns are, you'll be able to do this much easier than a lot of the other weapon classes.
Just make sure to keep an eye out for the bottom text after you get a kill to know how much of a kill streak you're on. As for my personal thoughts on the experience of getting platinum for shotguns, it was a blast. Literally. <laughs> Shotguns were without a doubt the most enjoyable class of Platinum so far. As you've probably noticed from me talking about the camo challenges, you don't have to focus on a lot of the camo challenges and you can just do the majority of them passively, which just makes for a very stress-free experience. The majority of the time I didn't have to worry about doing stupid challenges and I could just relax and get kills, which is a really nice change compared to a lot of the other weapon classes. I've always hated the people I've played against that use shotguns, but I understand why they use them now. Shotguns are just fun, and while it doesn't feel like it when you play against them, they're actually fairly balanced. They're amazing in very close range encounters, but once you stretch the range out, they get outclassed by pretty much every other weapon class in the game. And if you miss a shot or two with a shotgun, you're pretty much dead, so they are a high risk, high reward option. Something that I still can't wrap my head around is how lucky I was that the day before I started going for shotguns, a playlist that's just shipment, the absolute best map for shotguns, came out. And it wasn't even just normal shipment 24-7, it was shipment extended, which means that the games last even longer than usual. That is literally the best playlist for shotguns, and it came out as soon as I decided to do them. I even said in my video announcing that I was going for Damascus, that if shipment 24-7 were to come out, then I'd do shotguns. I've never had something that lucky happen to me in Modern Warfare, and you may think I'm exaggerating a bit here, but if shipment didn't come out when I was going for shotguns, and I had to play on the other maps instead, shotguns could have easily been the least enjoyable class that I did, because the other maps are all way bigger, and it would have been much harder to get killed, so I'm just so grateful that it came out when it did. As for my opinion on each shotgun, the Arno I know was the third gun I golded way back in February, and although this thing isn't as broken as it was in Season 6, it's still just obnoxiously good. The insane ammo capacity mixed with the extremely powerful Dragon's Breath rounds just make this gun a beast. It was actually the first gun I started leveling up when I got the full game in Modern Warfare, and since then, whenever I've tried to get a Relic challenge of any sort that just requires raw kills with a certain optic, I've always had the Arno I know in my back pocket, because it's probably the best gun in the game for getting raw kills at close to mid-range. And as a bonus, this thing never fails to make people rage, and always delivers the best of the best hot mics. The Model 680 was the gun I actually started going for shotguns with, and before I even begin to say how this gun performs, can we just appreciate how beautiful this gun is? Everything about this gun, from how it looks, to the gorgeous sound effects of pumping it and hearing the shells hit the floor, the Model 680 has to be one of, if not the best sounding and looking gun in the game. That aside, it performs pretty decently. Since it doesn't fire nearly as rapidly as the other shotguns, you really have to use cover and positioning to your advantage, and once you get that down, you can shred with it. And the first game I played with the Model 680, I broke my kill record of 86 by 3 kills, and I got my first ever gunship. The next shotgun I did was the Argent 12, and the range on this was pretty bad, so I really had to get up close and personal with the enemies, and when I put on the goofy ass 25 round drum mag, I could just keep spamming shots at the enemies, and I didn't even have to worry about reloading at all. Overall, I found it decent, but I wish I had a tiny bit better range because some of the hit marks I got with this thing were pretty ridiculous. Finally, I finished it out with my shorty, the 725. This thing was apparently completely broken when Modern Warfare initially launched, and since then it's been nerfed a lot, but it's still such a fun gun to use. What I absolutely love about this gun is how consistent the one shot kill is. Even with the shortest barrel at what I'd consider mid to long ranges for shotguns, it can still get a one shot kill and it's really refreshing because some of the other shotguns got a lot of hit marks at the same ranges. I really loved running the mini build with the sawed off barrel and stock and when you put on those two attachments it feels like you're just flying through the map. Although due to its 2 round ammo capacity, slate of hand is a must with this gun and although it's probably the best shotgun to use in a one on one gunfight, you can't run into a group of enemies and start shooting them like you would with other shotguns and you have to be really careful with your positioning and your shot placement. If I were to rank each shotgun in order from worst to best, it would go Argent 12 at the bottom, then just above it the Model 680, then the 725, and on top it's gotta be the doof doof itself, the R90. So yeah, the shotguns have been platinumed. Overall, the shotguns were a ton of fun, and a part of me wishes that I saved them for last because they would have been a really easy, stress free, and fun class to end on, but I had to make the most out of the shipment extended playlist while it was out. Anyways, now that the shotguns have been done, the next class I'm moving on to is the SMGs, and once they are done, I've unlocked Damascus. So thank you so much for watching this video. If it helped you out in any way, or you just liked it, a like would be really appreciated. But if you didn't like it, leave it a dislike and tell me why in the comments below. As I just said, we are just one class away from getting Damascus, however I'm going on holidays for two weeks, and as you're watching this video, I am on holidays, and I won't be back until the 14th or the 15th, so there's going to be a bit of a break in the Damascus grind. Also, since I'm away, I've scheduled this video to come out on the 2nd, but I won't be able to make any other videos in the following two weeks after that, so there's also going to be a bit of a break with the YouTube videos. Anyway, that's more than enough talking from me. The next time I will see you all, I will have Damascus. 
Again, thank you so much for watching this video and take care of yourselves.